Hello, it's Leah. I'm here to talk to you about the tiny house expo that I went to on the 4th of November. So this expo actually went for three days, so Friday, Saturday and the Sunday, but I went on the Saturday. I am at a yurt, no, it's a tiny home expo. So I'm here today to see what I can find out about actual tiny home living in Adelaide. We just went to a um, insurance and mortgage um, discussion, which was pretty good actually, because you want to you want to understand whether insurance is a thing you can actually get in a tiny home because the industry, whilst the creation of homes is pretty fast, the legislation supporting infrastructure is pretty slow. So anyway, here to find if we can find a home. So I don't know if you can really get a sense of the scale from that. If you've ever been to the showgrounds, I'd say that oval is probably like a regular size oval. Like if you were playing football on there, it's probably about the size of a football oval. And it wasn't, the whole oval wasn't used up. I mean, they did use, there's a big track that goes around it. So that there was some stuff on the track, not a lot, but a little bit. So there was a reasonable amount of um, exhibitors there, but also, I mean, tiny homes are small. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how many you want to get in there. Yeah, so we tried to look at um, a few of the homes. Some of them you had to take your shoes off for, which, I mean, makes sense, but I didn't really think about it and had sneakers on. It probably would have been better to have worn a slide type of shoe if I had have thought about that in advance. But also the lines for some of them were really long. Like, I thought, I don't know, some of them, I mean, this is, this is the good thing about a tiny home, right, is that if you can get to a window, you just have a little peek in, just a little... Oh yeah, I see. I see what's happening in there. And you can see the whole thing, so you don't necessarily need to go in. So that was pretty helpful. Back here you can see the displays and I don't it's thirty-five dollars entry today, like for all day entry. It's a little bit cheaper if you come after one, but we came early because we wanted to have a look at stuff and then see Bryce's talk at one forty five I think. So um I'm not really sure that it's worth that entry fee but we're gonna go have a look at some other things still we've only looked at a little bit to be fair at the moment and one of the things we looked at was like this these like outdoor bathrooms yeah and they look pretty good right and because one of the ideas we had is if we had a communal block that had different homes on it or a regular dwelling and then a, um, a granny flat that would have a pool and then next to the pool have a toilet block and the toilet block would um, be outside, right? So people didn't need to come into the home. But also if you have a tiny home, you don't want people to come into the home to use the toilet because the toilet is going to be tiny too. But um, anyway, so that that's an option as well. And also the um, they have drop-in ones that you can go actually inside, but that one there is like about 12 grand, but fully complete to go outside, fully delivered, fully complete, ready to go. You just have to get it connected. So that was a pretty good idea. We're going to go have a look at some container homes because mum loves container homes. And then, um, anyway, we'll, I'll, I'll show you what else we look at when we get there. This one looks real nice. Um, it says, it has luxury in the name, so I'm going to assume it's not affordable tiny home living it's more like slightly less affordable but geez it looks good love the outside well i was very wrong this base model here is under 50 grand and if you go the longer one which is like 11 meters it's about it's under 70 i think 56 or so under 60 in the base, obviously you can get modifications, make it a little bit wider, all of those sort of things. But that's that's heaps more affordable than I thought. And it's nice inside. Like, it's pretty nice. So this one looks much simpler in design than some of the others. But to be fair, some of the others like $100,000 more. It is more like a full-size kitchen in here as well. Like I wanted to wait to go in to look into those, but um, the sign out the front said it starts from 250 for a custom build. 250? Um, no, thank you. Anyway, I'll still go have a look because I still might get some good ideas, and maybe, maybe that's custom, but maybe there's a base model that's less expensive than that. 
so that one sold I don't know how much it was for but this one over here which is also for sale is 95 so again that's this is more what I wanted because I just want somewhere you know to sleep and still be able to go on holiday and buy too much Lego so that Joey is 95, it's like a show special, but that's because it's including um, the decking, the trailing and delivery. So that deck you would normally pay extra for, and then the delivery, but even still, um, 95 for the base, and then if you build your own deck or whatever, but that's pretty nice inside. It is very compact. The kitchen is quite compact, but I mean, if you're not, if you're not cooking all the things, it doesn't really matter. I was just going to go sit in the tent and listen to the speaker, but then I saw that little white pod. I'm going to go look at that. I mean, she's snug, but that is affordable. And then if you got one of the um, office pods, I mean, that's quite livable, really. But it does feel a bit more like a um, like an Airbnb type of scenario rather than a home. So we got in the uh, speaker's tent pretty early because we wanted to make sure that we were in there and we could see Bryce. So while we were there, waiting there, we got to see Stephen Yarwood, who is a, or Yar, Yarwood, Yarwood, uh, let's say Yarwood, who is an urban futurist and former Lord Mayor of Adelaide. And his talk was quite interesting. He talked about some of the challenges that face, you know, tiny home development, I guess, from an individual perspective, but also from a council perspective, or, I mean, I guess a regional community perspective, but he also touched on those things that I think are really, one of the things that really draws me to tiny house living, which is the idea of community and communal living. So I think communal living is a funny thing because I think people conjures up a particular type of imagery, right? And I don't mean that type, I don't mean that type of commune in a negative way but I mean having potentially multi-generational living yeah and then setting up a space that allows you to have shared spaces so not just here's my big giant house it takes up the whole block um, I have a little bit of lawn out the front and a little bit of lawn out the back and look if that if that works for you great that's great I don't feel like that's going to work for me I like a bit of outdoor space but also I really hate cleaning and I hate I hate the fact that when you have space you feel it you don't you don't you know what I mean everywhere look ha, lots of people got a junk room right we've got them so um it was good it was really interesting to hear him talk anyway it's also very useful um this is from an urban planning perspective I one thing I learned when I was Lord Mayor is that everyone thinks about it from their own perspective but being a, a mayor you start to see the collective uh, consciousness of a community building cities is not about any one person in the room. It's not about me, uh, and it's not about the current Lord Mayor or, or any mayor. It's about how the community works collectively. And this notion of reducing urban sprawl onto prime agricultural and horticultural land is incredibly important. Just out of interest, and I'm probably talking to a group where it might not be so prevalent, but hands up who's got an empty bedroom in their house. There's 14 million empty bedrooms in this country. <laughs> And the main reason really that we decided to go on the Saturday was so that we could see Bryce Langston, the host of the uh, YouTube channel Living Big in a Tiny House, because I'm a huge fan of his channel, like the way that he interacts with people, the way that he connects with people and the way that he kind of draws out story. So you learn about people, you learn about why they got to where they got to. And then you also do learn about the practical functionalities of, of space, right? How different things work for people, how they manage to get their home set up. Um, and all, like some practical things, yes, and about, you know, different storage and plumbing and all of those and power that stuff is is definitely included in it, but he also it's the story of people, and I think it's because Bryce is so he comes across as so genuine and warm that people just I guess they just tell him right, they just out their story. So anyway, we watched his talk as well, and his talk was really great because he talked about um the, and it's the first time he's done his talk like this is the ten things that he's learnt. Um, since he started his channel 10 years ago and the things that he's learned about, um, you know, not just 
making, I guess, and crafting the channel or their channel because he runs it with his partner. But um, what he's learned from people and about, you know, about life, um, which was really interesting. And it was um, also quite like, I don't want to say surprisingly emotional in the sense like, oh my God, I can't believe he struck an emotional chord. But what I mean is I wasn't expecting an emotional talk when I went there just thinking about where am I going to live or how am I going to live wasn't what I was expecting from the day but it was a really great experience. For those of you who actually I love to sort of know who I'm talking to has anybody seen my show before? Few of you? Cool. Right. Thank you so much. Who here who here already lives in a tiny house? No. Oh, here we go. We've got one person. Amazing. Who's here because they're thinking about living in a tiny house? Lots of you. Who's got dragged here by a partner that's trying to convince them that they want to live in a tiny house? Yeah, there's always a few of those too. Who's here because they know everything there is to know about tiny homes and has just come here today for the sole purpose of showing me up? <laughs> it's got to be the mayor. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Bryce Langston and I have spent 10 years now living in a tiny house, sharing tiny house stories on my YouTube channel, Living Big in a Tiny House. So I think I might have said in one of the earlier videos that I'm not sure that it was worth a $35 admission fee. You could get in for less if you went a bit later in the day. But I, I mean, I still think that's true, even though for me the best value of the day was um, seeing Bryce and actually also meeting Bryce. But seeing him talk about, um, you know, that, you know, the 10 things that he's learned and also actually listening to Stephen the Futurist because some of the things that he raised um, are really valuable points and, um, you know, and I think one of the other talks we learned a little bit about insurance and potential insurance brokers for actual tiny homes. Now, I'm not sure that I will, I'm not sure if tiny home living is definitely where I'll go. I need to really find out if it's practical in terms of land, um, establishment, insurance, mortgage like how all of those things work but I do know that I want to live smaller so things like this are still really helpful because yeah, they make you think about space they make you think about how you use space they also make you think about storage and functionality and also about stuff I mean I'm not I'm not a great example because this table is covered in lego and there's also lego underneath this other table in yeah, that's right, I've got two tables and there's also more Lego hidden down there. So I'm not so great with the space, but I'll get there. Anyway, tiny homes. I'll let you know. I mean, I guess I'll let you know if I do decide to get one of those luxury pods because the more I thought about that, the idea of the, you know, potentially the longer one, kind of the 11 metre one, and then the separate office where you, you know, so you can separate that kind of, home and work even if you're working from home i like that idea but i also feel like cleaning two pretty small places is uh, even i can manage that <laughs> all right thanks bye